The ocean is vast. In fact, the oceans cover three quarters of our planet. Even though this water is so blue, it's teeming with life. Living in the ocean are microscopic organisms responsible for many different global processes. These microbes are so abundant that they represent about 98% of the ocean's biomass. This means that if you were to add up the weights of all visible marine life, such as whales, their total weight would be less than all of the microbes in the ocean. These microorganisms are also the most diverse biological entities in the ocean. Paul Berube from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology is on the cruise to study one of the most abundant plants on the planet. What I study in the laboratory is Prochlorococcus, which is the smallest known photosynthetic cell on the planet. Um, it's one of the most abundant photosynthesizers um, in the world. Um, it lives in the upper water column where it can harvest light and it produces um, a significant amount of oxygen on the planet. In fact, half the oxygen um, on the planet comes from the oceans here. So every other breath you take um, actually is due to the fact that these organisms are working out here in the ocean for you. Just as there's incredible amount of diversity among all the microorganisms here in the ocean, there's actually an incredible amount of diversity within just a single group of photosynthetic cells. And what we're doing out here is trying to understand how changes in the environment affect the different types of prochlorococcus cells we find out here along the transect from Chile to Rapa Nui. Uh, some of the ways we study prochlorococcus here is one by flow cytometry, which is a method we use to count the number of prochlorococcus in the water. The second method is to look at the DNA of these cells. Every organism on the planet has DNA and it's the blueprint of life. Um, and what we're able to do here, out here in the oceans, um, is to filter seawater here on the ship, bring it back to the laboratory, and use sequencing technology to obtain uh, DNA sequence information about these cells. Um, and from the different types of DNA sequences we collect um, from the seawater samples, we're able to determine how the environmental parameters that we find at the different points along the transect influences, influence the type of prochlorococcus cells that are found um, here in the oceans. Dennis Bumbar from the University of California at Santa Cruz is studying a different group of microbes. So as we heard before, photosynthetic organisms in the ocean can be limited by the availability of nutrients. Just like plants on land, they need nutrients to grow. For example, nitrogen, phosphorus, and silicate for certain kinds of algae. And in the ocean, most commonly, the growth of those organisms is constrained by the availability of nitrogen. And it turns out that there are certain microbes, the so-called nitrogen-fixing microbes, that can fix atmospheric nitrogen gas that is dissolved in the upper ocean. And by doing so, those microbes basically act as little fertilizers of the system because once they take up the, the dinitrogen and incorporate it into their biomass, that biomass at some point degrades and thereby that nitrogen is available in dissolved form to other phytoplankters. And on a global scale, these organisms have an immense effect because all the nitrogen they fix is actually more than, for example, all the nitrogen that gets introduced to the ocean by all the rivers of the world combined. So a huge impact. And the best known nitrogen fixers of the global ocean are, for example, Trichodesmium or Crocosphera, Unicellia, Cyanobacteria which we will most likely not find in this area, but this area will have different nitrogen fixers. We expect to find so-called heterotroph cells. That means they do not obtain their energy from the sunlight, but from decomposing organic matter. And um, the way we do this is we take uh, samples of water and we filter them onto a filter, and those particulars we then take to the lab we extract DNA from them and look for certain sequences in that DNA which are basically the building plan of the enzyme of those organisms that they need to do to fix nitrogen to do that reaction. These are just a few examples of the microbial diversity in the ocean. Stay tuned to learn more.